Are you looking to improve your sports photography? In today's video, we're going to look at seven ways for you to do just that. Roll the intro. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at seven ways that will dramatically change your sports photography and improve it no end. These are things that I think about no matter where I am in the world, no matter what I'm shooting. These are constant things I'm always thinking about because I know they make me a better sports photographer. I recently did a socially distanced photo shoot with my buddy and British triathlete Ben Dykstra and I'm going to use some of those photos to kind of demonstrate some of these points. Number one, think context. Close up tight shots of action sports and sports in general are great. They show grit and determination and emotion. They're ace. What they do also is lack context. And over the span of a body of work from say an event or a race or a match or whatever it is, they lose the ability after a while to tell a bigger story. So when you're shooting, think about where your athlete is. Can you include more of the scene in the picture? This will help you tell much more of a story in one single image. Put that athlete somewhere. A close-up shot of a face is great, but there's a lot more to the story than that. So try and bring in the surroundings, bring in foreground elements and background elements and put that athlete somewhere so that you can see and your viewers of those images can see exactly what that image is. With Ben, for the first location, we were actually in the grounds of a big county hall. Had I been really, really close in and tight, you'd have lost where Ben was. He could have been running in an urban landscape as opposed to a you know, countryside landscape. But by drawing back and pulling back on uh, the zoom a little bit, I was able to give a much bigger depth to the images that we ended up taking. Number two, it's more than just action. If you want a more rounded set of images from an event, don't just edit down a hundred close in tight action shots. There's more to the sport that you shoot than that. With Ben, for example, I had him sit on a fallen tree and then grabbed a few quick shots of some details like him messing with his watch and him tying his shoes and branding and stuff on his t-shirt. Doing this is a really, really easy way to create a more visual dynamic with a set of images and it improves you as a sports photographer. So when you're at an event, don't just think about players and coaching staff. Think about equipment and officials and stuff with branding on it and crowd shots. All of these things help you to develop a much bigger story of that event. Number three, shutter speeds. While this might sound obvious, having an understanding of shutter speeds and how they relate to different types of images is a really, really good way of developing you as a sports photographer. Very high shutter speeds are great for freezing action, but often as sports struggles, what we do is we can't become obsessed with that and that's all we tend to do. To improve your sports photography, experiment with different shutter speeds, slow it down, speed it up, see what things you get out of it. Don't just shoot an event, for example, at one two thousandths of a second and freeze all the action. Experiment with slower shutter speeds, for example, mix it up. It'll make you a much better photographer much, much quicker because you'll be taken out of your comfort zone and be made to think more about what you're doing. If you haven't already, take a second to hit subscribe so you'll get notified whenever I post up new videos. At the moment, that's about twice a week. You can also check out my work and interact with me more on Instagram. I'm at Ben Snapstuff. Yep, I know, not the best username ever. Number four, apertures. As sports photographers, it's really, really tempting to crank that aperture setting to where you've got the lowest possible f-stop number that you can have. As sports photographers, we often fall into the trap of everything just having a beautiful, soft background and that focus being solely on that athlete. But it can become a bit of a hindrance. To become a much better sports photographer, it's worth trying different apertures in different settings. Not everything needs to be out of focus. Experimenting with different depths of fields gives you a much different look. It will really improve your sports photography because it will make you think and a thinking photographer is a much, much better photographer. Number five, white balance. For me, white balance is one of those settings that can dramatically improve you as a sports photographer, but it's one that we often overlook. We get so busy and preoccupied with shutter speeds and apertures that we forget about white balance and we forget about the colors in our images. And it's one of those settings that can make a massive, massive difference. 
For years, I didn't really understand white balance. I would just set it to auto and let it do its thing, but I'd always be like really dissatisfied with how my images would then come out looking, and I never truly understood why. Did you ever take a photo of something with a lot of white in it? And when you looked back on your camera or later on the computer, the white seems to be a little bit blue or a little bit yellow. It's because your white balance was totally off. Now, most photographers set their white balance to auto and leave it in that setting. And while auto is a great way of picking out the right white balance, it can often be thrown out by subjects and other colors that come into the frame. So setting your white balance and locking it down really helps to get a much more consistent look to your images. Personally for me, if I'm shooting outside, I'll always have my white balance set to cloudy. It's just a personal thing. It gives me the colors that I like for my images. Number six, focal lengths. Having a better understanding of focal lengths and how they affect an image will make you a much, much better sports photographer. Mixing up different focal lengths, even if you only have like two lenses in your kit, will really, really help. Just having a set of images from a sporting event that's all shot at exactly the same focal length eventually will get a little bit boring for you and for the people who are looking at your images. If you've just got one lens, say a 7200, don't shoot everything at 200 mil, mix it up. You don't need to be running dual camera systems like I do to be able to make the most of different focal lengths. Some of my favorite images these days from work and from my portfolio are actually shot wide rather than traditional tight action images. And that's because I've experimented with different focal lengths and I've found the stuff that I really, really like. Just for me, happens to be that wider stuff. And number seven, last but not least, make the most of access. Access is something that everybody complains about. I hear it no matter where I am in the world and I hear it all the time online. Oh, I'd have got a much better shot if I'd have had this access or I'd have got a much different image if I'd been closer or etc, etc, etc. Limited access often becomes an excuse for sports photographers as to why they didn't get certain images or at worst, it stops them even trying to get a different kind of image. Take this image as an example. It's not from the photo shoot with Ben. It's actually from the U23 men's race at the World Triathlon Grand Finals in Lausanne, Switzerland in 2019. For this race and for the whole week, I had access all areas. So I could literally stand anywhere I wanted within reason. Obviously I couldn't stand right in front of the athletes when they're racing. But where was this image taken? on a stair gantry that allowed the public to cross from one side of the course to the other. Literally anybody could have taken this photo. I didn't need a big fancy access pass to allow me to do it. So don't let the access get in the way of your creativity. Use what you have and you'll improve as a photographer no end. So there you have it, seven ways to improve your sports photography. Drop a comment below, tell me what's improved your sports photography the most over the last 12 months. Would definitely love to hear about what's improved and what's helped you. Till next time.